it. It's getting better. Better, little better. All the time. Life solutions, coaching, counseling, naturopathic medicine, insights for successful living, and getting better with Ann Beal. Welcome. I'm Ann Beal, and this is Bunny Pounds, and we are here at NRB in Orlando, Florida. That's the Religious Broadcasters Convention, and and today this is Bunny Pounds, and she is with Christians Engaged, yes. and so we wanted to hear about the ministry, and it's actually in Dallas area. Exactly. And uh, But you reach everywhere. Yes, we're in all 50 states. Um, we we built uh, a get out the vote system, kind of a voter mobilization system for the body of Christ. Uh-huh. Um, we're a civic engagement ministry for, in a nonpartisan way, helping Christians pray, vote, and engage regularly. Pray, vote, and engage, which is what Christians Engaged is, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been doing it? We started uh, the end of 2019. Um, oh, I ran congressional campaigns for 16 years, uh, worked in government and ran for Congress in 2018. Um, million dollar race yeah. uh, in a, a runoff, a slightly lost. And um, I really felt like, you know, God spoke to me about the church being the answer for our nation. And then we had a leadership crisis in our nation. We needed moms and dads and grandparents to rise up and start be building habits of being leaders in their community. So that's what we're doing, helping people. So not a congressman then. You, you didn't get to do that. Right. Um, Praise God. And I hope that in Texas, the election was fair, mm-hmm. right? There have been so many different... Um, legal things about Texas, about different voting things. So you were in Dallas County? Dallas and East Texas. So East Texas. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because are you going to try again or do you feel like you're led differently now? No, I actually think I can have more of an impact uh, on the country uh, doing this. Um, there was a big right. hole. Um, there was not really a system that Baptists, Bible Church, Charismatics, everybody could partner with to activate the church. And so people are carrying burdens right now for America and they don't know what to do. That's right. And we have the beginning marching orders. You know, first we talk to God. Then we start voting in every election, esteeming what the founders gave us, uh, you know, realizing that we need to love our neighbors and elect righteous people. Yeah. Um, and then we need to start engaging, whether that's our chamber of commerce or, you know, city council or t- our community college board yeah. of trustees. Um, there's a different right. thousand ways we can engage. But if everyone does their part, we can make a difference. I would think. 100 <laughs> percent you can make a bigger impact doing that than being in Congress because Congress doesn't do much. No, they don't get and, much done and you're anymore. really only one of 435 yeah. members of Congress. It's um, just so it's it, difficult. Well, as you see, there's only a few that really stand up for what is right now. Yeah. And I don't know if they're bought out, if they're scared, if they just, it's easier not to fight. I don't know what it is, you know, compromise. I don't know, but it seems like about almost 400 of them, 300 of them uh, are compromised in some way or they're just not going to do anything. And I don't know what it's like living there. And I don't think they should live there. I think they should all live in their own states and their yeah. own counties, their own areas that they represent instead of going to D.C. and getting poisoned the way they do or pressured lobbyists they call them lobbyists in america but mm-hmm. all the other countries i call them bribe that's bribery mm-hmm. but in, in our country we call it lobbying you know so they can pay them or whatever and so it well, just has affected and that's what we're trying to teach and people that um do have a car- carrier burden to get to know their elected officials become their friends really get in their life because the more they're gone whether that's in our state houses mm-hmm. or in dc the more they get isolated and we can make a difference as Christians really um, holding them accountable by encouraging them as well to uh, change our country. So how do you get to know them? Because, you know, you hear a lot of people say, call your congressman Mm -hmm. and you call. You don't get the congressman. Of course, you get somebody um, email them, um, but you don't really get to engage with them. Well, most members of Congress do parades a couple times a year where they need volunteers to walk with them. A lot of them will do coffee with the congressman or they'll do town halls or they'll do different meetings out in the community. I I tell people staff is your best friend, though. 
It's like the assistant to a CEO, right? Um, You want to get to know the staff. You want to tell them what issues you care about. It's not the member of Congress that's putting people like veterans on a committee or that are getting pro-life activists together to learn about the life issue. It's the staff staff that's going, you know what? I just met somebody in the district that loves that issue or is really tied in with human trafficking issues or whatever it is. And they pull you into conversations. So, um, but definitely handwritten notes are like the most effective. (laughs) Shockingly, if you write a handwritten note to an elected official, it's going to end up on their desk uh, because the staff knows that they, that person spent a lot of time and effort to make that happen. Phone calls are highly effective actually. Um, when there's a big bill that's coming before um, the legislature, yeah, they track those calls. I and, called John Cornyn. Yeah, my good for you. Uh, yeah. Um, and then um, emails are effective. Uh, you know, a lot of people there's these interest groups on different issues that they ask you to email them in. Um, those, and they'll preform the emails, and you just fill in your name. Do you think those work? They, you know, what they do because what happens is. That that member of Congress gets that email and they tag you in their database as being pro-life or pro-Israel or whatever it is. And so when they look at how many constituents do we have in our database that are pro-Israel, how many are against Israel, they analyze those numbers. And so you might think this is just a simple little email, this right. is a simple call, but over the long run, it can make a huge difference. See, that's good to know because that helps me want to do it. Yeah. Because I think the longer it goes, it feels like we don't have any impact at all and they don't listen to us. Right. And so by you telling these work, I didn't really like, okay, so my my grand my grandfather, mm-hmm. he passed away and I found he had written notes to different congressmen. And they wrote for, you know, um, his children, okay? And they wrote back and, like, he got sent a flag. And he had the flag in there with the letter. He he was so organized. He had a letter for my brother for baseball from a congressman. And so he's the one who did all that. I'm the youngest, so. Yes. But I I was blown away. And he had just written them. And they wrote back. Theirs were typed. I think all of them were typed. But they sent stuff back. No, and uh, it, it happens. And, and I really want to encourage people. That's what we do with Christians Engage. We help Christians um, through reminding them through text and emails about every election in their state. But we also have on demand video curriculum and free resources to teach them how to engage. We have an on ramp to civic engagement seminar. Um, that's really like a six and a half hour course of how to really start moving in this area. We have a local government curriculum, and I think we're going to talk about our Nehemiah class, too. Um, we Nehemiah. want to yeah. help people um, become leaders, and every mom, dad, grandma, grandpa can engage in this space and make a difference. And um, so these that relationships Christ- matter. Is that ChristiansEngage.com? Yeah, ChristiansEngage.org. And yeah. so if they go there, they find all this out? They do, yeah. Take the pledge to pray, vote, and engage on yes, our website, and, and you will get all of that information. And you can go to our classes page to look at all of our curriculum. How long have you been doing this? Three years. Three years, and you have done a ton of work. Right. But you have a passion. Yeah. What? When you have a woman with a passion, (laughs) it is amazing what she accomplishes and she changes the world. Yeah. I have a book coming out in November from Charisma Media. It's called Jesus and Politics. Um, It's really my story of walking with members of Congress for years and walking in the presence of God. Um, But, you know, I really want to inspire people that, you know, God can take a homeschooling mom that really got passionate about the life issue, testified in front of a platform committee on a, um, you know, to change the platform and of, of a political party and you know, 20 years later, I was nominated by David Barton to represent David Texas. Barton. Yeah, the Wall, Wall, Wall yep. Builders. We we were elected Alito. to represent Texas on the National Platform Committee together last time. Dang. And uh, this year, it'll be Lord willing, me and Kelly Shackelford. Uh, Kelly, yeah, leading. brother for this too. Yeah, I used to be a part of it. Kelly's on my national advisory board for Christians Engaged, and um, so you know, one, God can use one step of obedience. 
to lead into lots of different things. And, um, you know, it led for me being one of the top consultants in Texas and then running for Congress. And, you know, now I'm here to empower the church to make a difference at one day at a time. Who would have thought Bunny Pounds? Bunny Pounds. Bunny Pounds would um, make such an impact. <laughs> Because you see the name. Is that your real name? It is my real name. Um, my dad got saved watching Billy Graham on TV, and he read a book about Billy Graham, and his daughter, Ruth Graham Bell, was nicknamed Bunny, Bunny. and he thought that was cute, and, <laughs> and he, he held on to it and put it on my birth certificate. Well, I have to tell you that when I saw your name, I had to interview you. So I did. I saw it and I wasn't sure I had enough space. And I'm like, I have to see her hey, because my nickname was Bunny when I was young, too. That's awesome, and, man. And only my friends that grew up with me know that. Yeah. And so sometimes they'll put it on Facebook. They'll go, you're so funny, Bunny. And I'll be like, don't tell just, anybody yeah, that. Yeah. My 13th birthday party, my mom said, Bunny, can you come help? She had been so good up to that point. I don't know what happened to her. And, she, and everybody was like, Bunny, Bunny. And then they never... Forgot. Oh, that's Never awesome. forgot. Well, my sister's name is Sunny, so, you know. So I don't even know how they wouldn't be confused. How would you get that? Sunny and Bunny when she's calling names, right? It's it, Yeah. You know you, you know how when you're a mom and you, like, transpose your kid's names? Mm -hmm. Like, I had Israel, and I would always call him Ben, you know? Oh, it's gosh. like, they're like, stop calling me by the other kids' names. Yeah, it was confusing. It's a little bit of dementia bit. when you go for word retrieval, and you look at the child, and you know who that is. Yeah. The wrong name comes out. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's not like you don't know who that child is. Oh. There is something about that. So I kid around because the more I learn about Alzheimer's and they'll start doing that, I'm like, oh, so when I was, I had my kids, was that a little bit of dementia? Because <laughs> I don't do it now. But so it, it gets better if you take, I take a lot of supplements now for memory so mm -hmm. that I can do everything that I do. And I've stopped doing that. I never, I never had that problem anymore. And my kids would be like, oh, when I start calling, my mom had six kids. So she'd start calling. Oh, wow. Kids, anyway. But I, and this is amazing. Thank and you. I'm glad to know about all of this and what we can do to be engaged. And I can't help but think right now you might be on the FBI list. Because I don't know. So we were um, we were the ministry in 2021 that was denied our tax exempt status from the IRS. Yeah. Uh, the Internal Revenue Service said that Republic that Bible teachings are typically affiliated with the Republican Party and candidates. They put that in writing in a letter it's and denied our tax exempt status. Right. And we had to fight that with our friends at First Liberty Institute and Kelly Shackelford. Um, and 21 days later, by the grace of God, after many, many Fox News appearances, and we were showing up on just, uh, Franklin Graham, Charisma, everybody was covering it. Um, we won that uh, reversal of that. I actually had the Internal Revenue Service supervisor oh, of my agent call me and apologize. So, you know what? It really it showed me. Impact. No, it showed me we had people around the country praying. We had people calling their members of Congress going, how can this stand? And a whole bunch of courageous members of Congress, about 12 of them, led by Congressman Chip Roy from our great I state of Texas. Mm -hmm. um, they led a letter to the IRS commissioner and said this cannot stand. And 21 days later, we had a reversal, which I thought, Anne, was so great because, you know, in Daniel 10, we see Daniel prayed against the principalities and powers over a nation. And God heard his prayer the very first day. But... You know, it took 21, 21 days, days to get see that answer that prayer. And I felt like that was a word for the America that if we actually stand up and we do what we're supposed to do, God will meet us in yeah. that obedience. It's so interesting. So I have a lot of friends that, are, you know, I'm from Little Rock and it's a pretty liberal state. I have a lot of friends that are Christians, but they're Democrats. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that their eyes aren't opening a lot, but it's kind of a thing there that if you're a Democrat, you're always a Democrat. And so... I think it's gotten to the it's gotten to the point where it's very hard for them to remain that way. But um, because I think it's gotten to the day where it's not about political party anymore. It's about our country not collapsing, well, you know, and well, protecting our families and things like that. Right. Yeah. Just come down to like being able to feed your family and just the basic survival things that we always thought were part of our tax paying dollars. Right. There's yeah. just so many things. And so. Christianity is a part of that, just freedom of religion and things. But um, And we don't endorse political parties or candidates, but we want to help Christians understand how their values, their biblical values, align with the party platforms, that what's right. happening in the candidates. 
um, and we can help you discern and, and research your ballot and do that in 20 minutes and go in much more prepared than anybody else. That's what they need to be. Yeah. Thank you. Do. Thank you. Wow. Okay. That was Bunny Pounds. ChristiansEngage.org. And her book, when it comes out, Jesus and Politics. <laughs> It's coming. Yep, right? it's coming. All it's right. Fall. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ann. And we want to help you stay informed and to learn all about the things you can do to make an impact in your world and change your world. And if Bunny can do it and she can change the world, look what she's done in such a short amount of time. You can, too. Don't believe you can't. Don't believe that it. I don't like it, but it, I can't do anything about it. But that's not true. She shows you that. And there are Christians all over the world and Christian organizations that are there to help you. If in, you know, to help you reach these goals. So, um, that's what our show is all about to help you keep getting better. And at NRB, it has been wonderful. All these different, incredible, empowering people that are in broadcasting or media or written books. Yeah. Or speak, or I can't get over all the people here together. And I wanted to bring him, bring him to you so that you can keep growing. So take care. We'll catch you next time. 